Welcome to the Age of the Ring channel. I'm Jarian, a voice actor and beta tester for the mod. To get you all hyped up for the epic release that will be 8.0, we are starting a new series we'll call Beta Casting. Join me in an action-packed peek behind the curtain as our devs and beta testers go head-to-head, -head, testing balance and all new features of the upcoming release. Let's go! Hey everybody, welcome back to our third installment of this beta casting series. Um, I'm really excited, the whole team has been really excited to be putting out this content for you guys. It seems like you guys really enjoy it um, and giving that sneak peek into what we've been working on for 8.0. So without further ado, we've got in the bottom right here, Harad being played by uh, Cassie King is Sappy Flappy, one of our mappers and beta testers. Uh, and in the top left here, on River Eisen, we've got Bomber playing Mordor. So Bomber is, uh, and Bomber is one of our newer beta testers. Uh, Bomber is going for a double slaughterhouse into Barracks third resource structure. So super, super standard stuff here. Um, and it looks like Harad is doing the same. Double resource structure, outposts going out, uh, third resource building. Um, only difference so far here is the outpost is just a little bit more expensive than the orc barracks. 50 resources more. And the warlord is going to cost 200 as opposed to the orc warriors costing 75. So, exactly. So, Mordor is going to be able to throw down a second barracks pretty early on um, with that money savings. Um, yeah, and the warlord just now coming out for Harad. So, earlier on in the beta that we've been... Earlier on in the beta, the... Orc spam from Mordor was proving to be pretty oppressive against Harad because of those cost differences. Um, since then, the tribal units have been tweaked a little bit. There's been some changes since then. So I'll be curious to see how this pans out, and I'll be curious to see what Bomber wants to do here uh, and how spammy he wants to go with the orcs. Um, and I might be getting a clue here, actually. Yeah, so he is going for the third orc barracks. So we might see quite a few orcs coming down or coming out of Mordor here. To go up against Harad. Harad has chosen their two battalions, Spearmen for the Creep, uh, being supported by the Tribal Archers. Kind of like to see that. The Tribal units are a bit weaker than other starting pikes. Um, and kind of like you just saw here, when sometimes when I'm playing Harad and I'm creeping with the Tribal Spearmen, if the Wargs uh, focus down the Warlord, then you lose the whole battalion. So you got to kind of be careful there. I like seeing the, the Spearmen, or the Archers rather, supporting the Spearmen, creeping this. But as we speak, we've got uh, two battalions of orcs kind of beelining it down south here. Um, and they will find a kind of unprotected bazaar at this point. Sappy moving in to kind of protect this building here. As uh, these orcs are creeping this war glare up here. <laughs> One guy. <laughs> Come on, guys. Help me out. We'll see if they ever turn to do that here. But let's see how this damage is going down. So the... Axemen getting a good flank on these guys. It doesn't look like the orcs got a, a decent enough uh, clump. Uh, like sometimes you want to kind of move command them to kind of move around the building and, and kind of get a lot more surface area, more orcs attacking at once. I think the surround here was not good enough for Mordor to take this bazaar down with these archers kind of shooting uh, from behind here. So Harad going to successfully defend this. Bizarre here as a skirmish with some more orcs trying to reinforce was getting caught by these archers and spearmen, which are now level two. Um, or at least the spearmen are level two, I'm trying to click on these guys. Just the spearmen, so they'll be replenishing their, their battalion. Um, Southern Sentry going down. You guys saw this in an earlier beta casting video. Um, I think since then we have implemented a change. These guys are limited to four now. So after you summon your fifth Southern Sentry, the, the first one will disappear. Um, orcs getting ready to flank kind of all across the map here. Good positioning by Bomber. Just getting ready to be uh, threatening and harassing. Uh, these pikemen hitting level 2, getting that damage buff. Um, but Harad making a pretty big power play in the center here, moving across the ford with um, two battalions of archers and a lot of spearmen and pikemen. These archers kind of getting caught out of position here. They're going to want to retreat and get to a better, a safer spot. Uh, but the wraith's going down to kind of slow this attack, so... These battalions getting distracted by the wraiths are going to allow these archers to escape. More creeping being done down here as um, these orcs going to try and go for this bazaar as we were looking at. These ones going to get caught by these wargs, but we do see some Mahood 
standing behind. Uh, Mahood are great um, are great against these kind of lone battalions of orcs just because of their speed and their damage. So um, over here, Harad kind of still pushing forward, um, getting on top of these orcs. The spearmen kind of rushing for the archers. I kind of like that, but good positioning here by Sappy, getting the archers kind of separated so that even while these ones are trying to move and reposition, these ones are getting shot at. But three battalions of orc archers over here are going to be just the counter that Mordor needs to stop this kind of tribal spam. So much is happening over here, guys. We've got more Mahood. Um, it looks like the, these orcs that kind of ran through this warg pit were able to get the remaining damage done to this uh, bazaar. So much is happening. Uh, Mordor getting on top of these tribal units, finally, with the help of these archers. Uh, Harandor Raiders, though, uh, a little bit too late to the party here, stopping just before running into these pikes that were mixed in with these orc warriors here. Really, really great back and forth trades. Uh, Harad able to retreat with just a little bit of units left. Some pretty low health spearmen here. Uh, looks like they're going to get sacrificed to, the, to this battalion here. Um, the Harandor Raiders running. Oh! A great, great uh, command to retreat there from, the Harad, from uh, Harad there. Wow, what a crazy game so far. So as I was trying to say, the Mahood is really good at this kind of counterplay, protecting their base against the uh, the orcs that have been running around. Um, these Mahood getting caught out. And a really good counter push here by Mordor, getting enough orcs to get the orc horde bonus here. And the Nazgul coming out for Mordor as well as these Mahood, all the while these Mahood getting on top of the slaughterhouse, really great harassing units here. Um... I do want to mention that the Nazgul is a really good pick uh, here, especially, as, I mean, obviously it forces out Spearman as it does in every matchup. Um, but any tool that you have against Tarad to kind of focus down the Warlords specifically, without the Lies and Threats upgrade, which is not researched currently, I believe it's only uh, two tramples on a, on a Warlord to kill it, so that would remove the whole battalion from, from the picture here. Um, looks like these Mahud with their war chant, are getting crazy damage. Are they going to be able to take on all these orcs? Great use of this ability here, and leveling up like crazy, getting that bonus health and stats here. These Mahud chewing through these orcs. Great, great value out of that out of those Mahud units. Uh, but Mordor, similarly though, making this big push through the fort, is going to be able to take down that southern sentry and uh, take down this bazaar as the fourth men of darkness power is being summoned here. Right on top of the Nazgul. Two battalions of Spearmen plus the Khan. So Bomber is going to respond by taking his Nazgul out of Cav mode. Which I think is really smart here. Just even trying to retreat it in any direction would have run him right into these pikes. So getting getting the Nazgul out here. Who doesn't have Scream right now currently. Which is kind of a bummer. These Mahud making their way across the base here. We want to keep an eye on that. Brondor Raiders also poised to make some kind of attack. Um... Nazgul being put right into... So, going to be able to get good damage. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, no! Of all the... Of, there's so many juicy targets for that Nazgul to trample. And just really unlucky. Found the only remaining Easterling Pikes from that summon. Uh, over here, Harandor Raiders. Uh, a dual-pronged attack by Sappy here. Really good multitasking. These level 5 Mahud warriors getting crazy damage done on this slaughterhouse. Uh, the, the Harandor Raiders, though, kind of being sacrificed uh, through the kind of fortress fire here. But these last two level 5 Mahud give their lives to take down the bat. Getting those uh, first slaughterhouses is such a big deal. Um, you lose a lot of time spent uh, kind of leveling these guys up. So uh, Harad getting a big win there as they also push, push forward through the map with a mix of... Mahud Warriors and Harandor Spearmen also now joining the mix. So some upgraded spears. Uh, a level 1 CR Rule also joining the fight here. So um, CR Rule is going to be buffing with a little bit of experience gain, uh, damage, and armor for uh, currently only the Harandor and tribal units as he levels up his leadership uh, expands. So right now the Mahud not benefiting from CR Rule's uh, leadership. But this Southern Sentry going down, and these Mahud getting a pretty decent flank on all of these orcs here. So a pretty decisive attack and swarming of the tribal and Mahud units here. 
preventing the slaughterhouse from going down. I kind of want to see a lot of slaughterhouses going have been going down, plus a level two slaughterhouse. So, yeah, the uh, CP difference is massive here. Five twenty five for Mordor to seven seventy five for Harad. So really, really convincing play by Harad here, um, making sure that Bomber is kind of uh, staying in check with his base. The tribal encampment going down. What a great response here to the Nazgul. Uh, yeah, seeing the, the spearmen getting summoned. So just increasing the threat area for this. Na yeah, so Bomber sees this and goes, there's no way that my Nazgul is surviving uh, in cavalry mode. But um, able to get the Orc Horde bonus and, and staying close to the fortress is going to be able to kind of... Uh, Sappy says, even with a, a big posture like that, says, I'm not going to be able to get as much damage as I wanted to get done here, and is going to retreat, um, and Mordor is going to jump on top of this uh, encampment, hoping that uh, to finish it before another summon is available. Uh, Harandor Raiders, though, continuing to do um, what they do best, and uh, keep Mordor's CP in check. So losing another Slaughterhouse here... Um, while Mordor kind of focuses on this big defense. Really good uh, play from Harad here, keeping Bomber busy while uh, focusing on, or sending units off to the side to kind of deal with things. Deciding now to go in for this attack, I'm trying to find CR rule because once his leadership starts to affect the Mahud units as well, it doesn't look like they have the, the bonus here. The encampment going down here. What summon is this? It must have just been a Warlord summon. CR Rule just now hitting level 3, so that power spike on the Mahud units getting that damage and armor is going to be huge. Uh, orc Archers in decent position, though, getting uh, getting their hits off while the Meat Shield Orc Warriors are doing, what, doing their job. So, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going well for Harad here, but I think Mordor is making the most of their positioning and trying to do as best they can. But now the Amazir Caravan is going down and providing an even further leadership bonus. Um to these yeah a huge armor boost damage boost uh and experience boost so combined with cr rule these units are absolute chads at this point um even an architect kind of moving up forward as uh man this is really really fun to see the war chant going down for these Mah leveled up mahoods but uh getting trampled by the getting trampled by the nazgul here good control avoiding the harandor spearmen so much is happening and i'm trying to talk so fast this is crazy so it's really really fun to see harad kind of doing what the design was meant for is creeping these uh southern sentries forward getting the moving caravans to uh put down the kind of heroic statuesque buff here along with the tribal encampments but mordor doing a really really good job utilizing the um the easterling archers here along with the nazgul kind of preventing the uh harandor raider trample here um and it looks like uh, I love seeing the Doom Pyres going down for Mordor here. So buffing up, getting the leadership to kind of respond to the really good leadership stacking that um, Harad is doing here. And retreating the Amazir Caravan to save it for another day. This is peak, peak Harad play, guys. This is what we're looking for and, and expecting as we move forward here. Harandor Spearmen um, getting a pretty decent trade on these Easterlings here. I don't know if a full battalion went down, but... Uh, kind of retreating these guys while the fortress takes care of the rest. Pretty good. Saving the Easterling Archers. Um, another change that we're experimenting with is a nerf to the Easterling Archers. So mostly to their upgraded version. So the Barbed Arrows kind of received a pretty uh, decent nerf at this point. We're seeing some Muma kill for the first time. A Trample? Uh, okay. So um, War Beast of the South. Uh, the leadership to structures. But the, um, the active is the Trample. So uh, Harad kind of uh, avoiding the Spearman um, damage here. Uh, the attacks are going to do a decent amount of damage, but walking a Mubakil over the Spears is going to kill it pretty fast. So good control by Harad there. Trying to get right onto the production here. We'll see if he'll be able to... I don't, is that a two-hit kill? There's so much happening. Uh, unrelenting Sun going down. So it is a three-hit kill. We'll see if he's able to get a third attack off. Nope, okay, so these pikes able to uh, finish off the Mumak and save this uh, barracks here. Unrelenting Sun slowing and dealing a little bit of damage over time to all of these Mordor units, but all in all, a pretty great defense here by Mordor still. I mean, I think the the writing is a little on the wall here as we see max CP and income, therefore, from Harad. Um, 
a level 15 uh, or a tier 3 power while Mordor is actually exceptionally behind in power points at this point. Harad has an entire 25 point lead. 15 point lead as a, a 10 has not been purchased yet but could. Nazgul chasing down the Harandor Raiders here. Um, okay, so this symbol looks like there must be well, I'm really loving seeing this. There must be, a, yeah, the Mahud Captain over here. Combined with CR Rule, the Mahud Captain is also buffing Mahud armor and damage. So really, really good use of the of the Harad roster here by Sappy. Um, though I do love seeing um, this kind of defense here from, from Mordor, keeping them off of the production. And as just as I say that, these Harandor Raiders are going to finish off this uh, orc barracks as the Nazgul tries to chase them down. Um, Harad continuing to push up, push forward into this base. Really, really aggressive Southern sentries here. Uh, a trouble to deal with. But uh, Bomber staying in this with a line of slaughterhouses in the bottom left here. Kind of keeping that income up. Um, looks like Mordor also wants to tech into um, catapults here. War chant going down on these high-level uh, Mahud warriors, but not going to be able to get any damage done here. And another defense, <laughs> just as I say, the defense is kind of held off for now, but the tribal encampment going down, this time summoning in some more units as we see a giant scorpion as well. God, I could probably cast this three times and miss something. So, giant scorpion not getting the damage it wanted done on the production here. That was kind of ambitious of it, I think, to be kind of walking into the Easterling Archer and uh, Pikeman here. Tribal units also not getting the damage done here, so... Uh, Still a good defense here by Mordor, keeping most of its stuff intact. As we see Wraith on Wings getting summoned here, so not opting in for a second level 10. Um, changes that we're seeing to uh, to these, the Fell Beast just in general, both the ones summoned by the Fortress and the ones summoned by Wraith on Wings got nerfed a little bit. Um, I don't know if we implemented a nerf to their building damage, but they do take more damage from building archers and from regular archers, just kind of in general. Um, as well as the timer being significantly reduced. Um, so it's kind of good to see. Wow, good damage on the Mooma kill. I really like that, actually. I'm loving this interaction right now. So some great value out of the... But see, look at how much damage these guys are taking, even just from some leadership, sure, uh, our tribal archers here. Taking some decent damage, trying to go for some more um, almost level three high. bazaars here. We'll see if the damage is able to get done. But with the nerf to the timer... Uh, it's not gonna be enough. Wow, I mean, I really, I actually really liked that interaction. I thought that that was a very effective use of the power. Holding off the attack, killing a Muma kill just as it was coming out, um, and getting some damage done on these structures. I think that that has actually felt pretty healthy. We have, okay. Oh, I must have missed this just as I looked over. So we, this is awesome to, to see here, guys. The Mount Fell Beast uh, with the Breeding Grounds power. Uh, I think it's a 2,000 resource upgrade to the fortress that puts this. Uh, you can mount a Nazgul or even the Witch King on their mount uh, permanently until they die. Uh, as in, you can't select for them to mount their horse again. Um, wow, this is this is awesome getting to see this. So Mordor really making use of these flying uh, flying creatures here, kind of holding off long enough to save up the resources for this upgrade is really paying off here. Um being forced to retreat, though, as the Mahud headhunters and the tribal archers are here to defend. Um, coming in for uh, a swoop here to kind of take down the take down the archers to keep that threat away. And a really awesome counterattack here by Bomber. I mean, 775 max, still 1,000 max for Sabi, but look at the army size. He's absolutely eviscerated the Harad army with these... Uh, Easterling archers in the back. Uh, Bomber this whole game has had pretty My decent archer so position and, and, and upgrading to the Easterling archers has proved pretty good for him. Uh, CR rule continuing to level up here. Uh, challenging the upgraded uh, melee units. Nazgul getting great trample on the headhunters here. Incredible play by, by both players here. But we are seeing Mordor kind of take this base by storm and really put the pressure on. Um... Guards of the Serpent kind of coming out. I, so I must have missed Suladon coming out. Yeah, Suladon is right here. Guards of the Serpent are gated. Uh, you can kind of think of them like the Helmingus Warriors. Um, there's obviously differences, but they're similar in that respect uh, and are gated by Suladon. So Suladon joined by his guards, but are getting torn apart by the Easterling archers here. Um, 
Mordor really effectively using their meat shields with their glass cannon archers behind them. Nice. So then I just had to stay quiet for those voice lines. Incredible, incredible voice lines for the Nafarati Marauders here. Uh, kind of coming in to challenge him here. The Fell Beast kind of coming back in now as it's uh, healed up a little bit to jump on top of these elite units here. Um, oh, man. Wow, those uh, archers were getting some really, really good work in. They found, uh, the Harando Raiders found a really good window to get that trample in. Uh, part of the nerf to the Easterling archers was nerfing um, their crush armor, especially while they're unarmored, from, or while they're unupgraded. Um, so it's really kind of cool to see those changes being put into use. Um, the Easterling archers finding a, a little bit of a nerf in terms of their vulnerability, but still getting decent damage done. Um, I wonder if we'll ever see the barbed arrows come out. It doesn't look like we're upgraded to level 3 yet. But, um, Sappy here effectively trying to get a reset, but this Fell Beast, he's got to deal with this Fell Beast. He does have the Harondor Archers here to try and uh, fix this problem. Um, they are turned. Yeah, look at this. Really fragile to these archers now. Is he going to be able to retreat in time? Incredible. I'm I'm really really enjoying the interaction with the new with the new fell beast. Uh, earlier in the beta, these guys were not taking a lot of damage and they were really really oppressive. So this nerf to their archer damage, kind of I'm still seeing them be super effective against Harad here, but um, uh, finding clear counters in elite archers and, and and staying near the buildings too much is forcing him to retreat and 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 heal up giving Harad kind of more time to counterattack here. It does look like 4th Men of Darkness was summoned again to get on top of these black uh, black Uruks here. More Harandor archers coming out. We've got giant scorpions waiting to go. I wish I knew what this was. When this airs, maybe somebody from the team can tell me what this buff is. I'm, I'm honestly not sure what that is. We are the warriors. All right, a big push coming in here with some siege engines and these giant scorpions. Um, they have really good building damage. And it's cool to see. I'm really enjoying seeing this phase of Harad. There's less warlords, less tribal units. And we're going strictly for Mahud, Harandor, um, Harandor units. Uh, the, like the, just the upgraded units coming in. Oh my gosh, I'm missing this as this is happening. Um, a really cheeky summon of the tribal encampment here. And... And the burning sands getting summoned on this huge... The entire production burned to the ground by this level 25 power. Still seven points away from the level 25 for Mordor here. But that's, that's such a devastating... That's a game... That's a game-ending move right there. Oh my gosh. Burning sands calls down a, a, just a giant sunbeam that burns structures to the ground very effectively. That was very, very strong. I wonder... We... I wonder how we feel about that. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's on par with the Mordor um, uh, volcano as well. Wow, great stuff! It looks so at the, at this point, Harad is kind of just taking advantage of kind of being ahead this whole game, staying at a thousand CP, protecting its so never losing any level three resource structures here. So just maintaining income, maintaining um, a CP presence, and trading so favorably, like killing more and more uh, units and getting that power point lead kind of results in getting that first uh, first to the... oh my gosh did did that Nazgul just die to catapult friendly fire? Is that even possible? <laughs> wow I think that's what happened yeah the Nazgul must have died to the to its own catapult here that's crazy Siar rule plus Suladon here. Um, preventing the re-expansion by uh, Harad. But these catapults getting in work. This is great to see. I really think that Bomber had a really good window of opportunity after using the Wraiths on Wings, which I'm so happy with where that is at, by the way. Um, with this push, if even just one catapult was involved with this big push that Mordor was in this base... I think that would have been a lot different for her, um, for Mordor here. Getting onto these buildings a little bit easier with some siege could have proved to be the difference here. But a um, a Karad Patriarch 
uh, getting some decent uh, fortress damage, and this giant scorpion also in uh, in aggressive stance is going to do yeah huge damage to this fortress here. But like even against the units, against the the Mahud units, they must be weak to to siege or, or fire here. Um, I really think Mordor's uh, fate would have been a little bit different if we saw these a little bit earlier. What an incredible game between these two guys. I'm geeking out about this. This was so much fun to see, especially to see so much new stuff kind of implemented all at once with the Fell Beast changes, the Pikeman, Easterling Archer changes, um, and seeing Harad's roster, seeing all the powers in action. We saw that kind of what, what the devs really had in mind for Harad was kind of creating those forward bases and we're really seeing that with the southern century tribal encampment uh strategy here from harad and that i mean this is this is the end of the game but i'm just still enjoying thinking about everything that went went down here got another uh century going down and uh yeah wow what great stuff great great play from both players a really really oppressive style from harad um Got to see the Mooma kill in action just a little bit. No upgrades and kind of a whiff of a trample, but uh, getting some good damage on the on the structures over here. Getting chased down the these guys. Oh. I'm gonna listen back to this. I, I, I watch the cast back every once in a while, and I know that I've been like talking about one thing and then seeing something, getting excited and moving to that. But hopefully, you guys are able to follow along and enjoy with this and enjoy this cast as much as I did. So. Um, I assume the GG is going to go down. Maybe they're even just talking about the game at this point. I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. Um, as the Numa kill kind of uh, brings the game to a close here. Wow, guys. What an incredible game. Uh, really hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, let us know what you think about what was going on. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys with the next one. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.